So you imagine 10 to 20, 30 years from now, many, many jobs will involve working together with robots. The employees of the future will have to be able to interact with robots. And we envision augmented reality as one way to bridge the gap between the robot's world and the human's world. So you can't just look at numbers and data and that won't translate into your mind. So we take that information and then we convert that into visuals that are appropriate for humans and we kind of project that on either an iPad or a HoloLens and that allows us to like bridge the gap between what a robot is seeing and how a human can understand that. And what we're doing is we're using something called augmented reality to enable the robot to project data and communicate with the human uh, in a sort of natural way. We humans are very intuitive creatures, you know, when we look at another human, we're kind of able to tell a lot about them by their body language, by their expressions, the kind of movements that they're doing. But when it comes to robots, you know, they're all metal and plastic and we're not really able to kind of get a sense for what's going on inside them. It's really fun to be able to use those skills that you learned in class and actually implement them and see your work becoming tangible and it just gives you so much pride and it just makes you motivated to keep on working. I think it gives uh, Tufts undergrad students an edge because they, they're able to create something meaningful within their undergrad and be able to like learn those skills that you won't necessarily learn during coursework. The equipment here is basically state-of-the-art equipment. Uh, it is expensive, so again, th this is where again alumni donations or other forms of fundraising come, in, come into being. Uh, but there's no way you can do cutting-edge research without the state-of-the-art equipment. You know, if we're going to have to have a colony on Mars, robots will have to build it. If we're going to have to clean up all the plastic from the ocean, robots are going to have to do it. There's lots of applications where we, you know, we need this kind of intelligence in robots, which we currently don't have to address uh, very big problems that, of course, would span generations way, uh, way after mine. I find this to be, you know, the most rewarding thing I've ever done. And it's more than just the satisfaction of solving a problem. It's the satisfaction of the problem being solved, being actually useful.